welcome to this video tutorial on the basics of audio editing with Premiere Pro and Some with Soundbooth. Um, in this video we're going to show you how to adjust the volume as a whole track, how to adjust individual bits in Premiere Pro, um, and also we're going to show you how to adjust in Soundbooth. So here we have a clip of uh, somebody who's been given the Heinrich Mover, although they don't need it, and there are some audio problems. So we play to listen. You hear that the man speaks very quietly all of a sudden. He's been playing with a toy knife. And then the woman gets very loud. So as you can hear, the sound is all over the place. So how do we adjust this? How can we move in this uh, this interface to, to see what's going on and see what adjustments we can make? Well, firstly, we can edit in the timeline by using keyframes to change the volume of individual bits. Now let's firstly move around our timeline so we can see things a bit better. We don't really need to see the screen so we can pull this up quite a bit. And now we can adjust down here. Now as long as you're over here to the left, not in the main bit here but in the left, you can get these marks to move things around. So what I can do is I can take the main one and I can shift it right up. And then I can go for audio one which is the one we're going to be editing and I can pull it right down so I can see the whole audio waveform. So now I can see what I'm working with. And in the middle, there is a yellow line. And if I hover my mouse over the yellow line, I get that little cursor with an up and a down arrow. That is saying this is the volume level for this clip. And you can change the volume level for the whole clip simply by moving it up or moving it down. Now, please note, I can do Control Z to undo. Please note, this is just for this clip. It is not for the whole track. There is, as you will see, more in this track, some other clips as well. However, we are just adjusting, if you use this yellow line here, you are just adjusting the volume of this individual clip. It will not adjust this clip and it will not adjust this clip. It will just do this clip at the end, or the one that you play with that yellow line for. It's quite important because sometimes people think that they're adjusting the whole thing and they're just doing that individual clip. Let's zoom into this clip a little bit more again. If you want to change the volume for the whole track, it is done up here in the audio mixer panel. Now there are quite a few tracks in this particular one. And this is track one, and if I just hit play, you'll see there's the sound. I can move up and down the sound for the whole track. Now that is changing all of the clips in this track, every single one of them. So all of those would be changed if I adjust it here Whereas, if I adjust it just down here with this yellow line, I am adjusting just the volume of this individual clip. All right, let's pull this back up. Now, I obviously have a problem that our man is speaking very quietly here, and yet the woman is virtually screaming here. So I need to adjust particularly this man going uh, a little bit louder. How do I do that? Because the rest of it is, let's say for argument's sake, that that's okay. I do it by adding keyframes. Now, what a keyframe does is it sets a point and says at this point in time you must be at this level. So if I set a keyframe where these two lines are crossing here, I am telling Premiere Pro that the sound, which this yellow line represents the sound volume, must be at this level where I put the keyframe. Then I can animate it. I can turn it up here and then I can turn it down again here because I set a keyframe here, if I set another keyframe up here saying you've got to be louder at this point then Premiere Pro will increase it and go for as long until I tell it I want to go back down again. So how do I do keyframes? There are a number of ways of adding keyframes to this yellow line. The first way is by using this little symbol here called the Add Remove Keyframe button. Click on that and a little circle is put here and if we go back to our effects control panel you'll see that also, and I'm just going to open up the volume track here, I've got a little diamond keyframe here. This is representing the length of this clip, only of this clip. So I put a little keyframe in. I can add another keyframe, and I'm just going to go for just a couple of frames, and I'm going to add another keyframe, and the other way to do it is either you can click here again, you could if you want to click here, and also add a keyframe, but the way that I do it is I use the control key, hold the control key down and press click. On a Mac, it would be the command key, and that adds another keyframe. Now watch. I can take this second keyframe, and I can drag it up. Because what I'm saying to Premiere Pro is, 
at this point in time Premiere Pro you must be at this volume level but just a few frames later at this point Premiere Pro you must be a lot louder and I have created animation. I don't need to worry about the volume levels in between Premiere Pro deal with that I have just given it the keyframes and it is doing something called interpolation it is interpolating between these two points. Okay so I have turned up the volume for these bits here but I've also turned up the volume for everything else where this yellow line goes so I need to turn it down again here so I will go along to the end of the quiet bit I will control click here and then I'll go a few frames forward again and then just to show you I'll click here as well to add another keyframe so you can either add them here control or command click or you can add them up here and then I'm going to drag this second clip down back to where it says about 0 dB you can see that's that little tooltip at the bottom it's not quite 0 dB but it's close enough now I can play that back and see what it sounds like For goodness sake, woman. It's just a toy. you can see here Look. that the volume is louder than it was before now I can adjust that by simply grabbing getting that double little double arrow and I can make it louder or I can make it quieter so looking over here at the volume level let's put it back to how it was and let's see what the volume level looks like we're down at sort of between minus 30 minus 18 at the absolute most okay now let's take it and drag it up so that we can see we've done a good bit of animation volume animation and now let's have a little look and see where we're at we're coming up to about minus 12 so much louder over minus 12 so much better volume and then the lady starts screaming and it gets a bit distorted well if we think she's too loud we can animate it how do we do that control or command click go a couple of frames forward with the right arrow button and then either control click or if you don't think you can get in there do this add keyframe button and then click on the new keyframe and pull it down and then visibly go to your past the noisy bits or if you wanted to be very clever you could put one in the middle you could add a keyframe there go forward a couple of frames with the right arrow button keyframe there pull it back up if you wanted to be pedantic I think maybe this is going a bit over the top but you could do it if you wanted keyframe right arrow tool keyframe drag it down and then go to the end keyframe the reason I'm doing two keyframes is if I pull this up watch this line just here I create a drag Can you see I'm dragging it I'm not creating a level volume so what I want to do is create another keyframe a couple of frames further or just one frame further if I want because that leaves these two with a level bottom so these are now much quieter and if we listen back to that much quieter not even going into the yellow so that's how you can do keyframe audio editing in Premiere Pro quite a simple process but it's also quite time consuming um, I just want to show you one other thing if you open up the level to early just here in volumes under my effects control you'll see that I could of if I wanted I could have animated it here and if you can't see this by the way it's probably because you've got this little double arrow closed so you click that double arrow and it'll open it up closed open okay so I could animate it here but actually I've animated it in my timeline and that's probably the simplest way now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my windows menu up here and I'm going to open up my history panel which is actually just down here and all the changes that I have made have all been moved in here and I can undo any that I like just clicking backwards so that's undone quite a lot of the keyframes undone more more of the keyframes in fact if I take it right back to here I've gone right back to the beginning but if I thought oh well I wanted more of that back again until you have exited the project you can play around throughout your history just by clicking backwards and forwards in this history panel which is a really valuable feature but I'm going to go right back to the beginning because I want to show you another way of editing this clip what I want you to do is right click and sometimes if you've only got a, a single uh, button mouse for a Mac you would command or control click so right click on it and then go to this little option down here edit in sound booth render and replace click on that now what will happen is 
Premiere Pro has rendered out the sound file so it is a brand new name and if we pull this across you can see it's called Heinrich One Audio Extracted so it's brought out the audio into a new program which is started up called Soundbooth now Soundbooth started very quickly because I already had it opened in my timeline otherwise if you do it um, if you do it the other way it can actually start fairly slowly so so be patient now I'm not going to go into all the details of Soundbooth but this is the same file if I just click and play you'll hear it you can see that we've got all these issues. Now say I feel that the whole thing is not very balanced and I want to balance the sound of the whole thing and make it all louder and much easier for my audience to hear. There are two buttons right at the bottom right. Just look at them here. If I hover over this one it says louder. I could click that one but actually the one I really want is the one next to it. It says equalize volume levels. Watch what happens when I click this it does a calculation and it does something that we would generally call it it's sort of a normalization it decides nothing is going to be higher than a certain level but it's going to reduce the dynamic range in other words what was really quiet has been brought a lot louder or a lot nearer to the louder volumes so that if I play this bit here for goodness sake women it's just a toy look a silly little toy a toy in actual fact I think on this particular one that she's a bit too quiet but it has made the whole thing a lot louder and it is never peaking at these two levels here which is the red if anything was too loud let me just select something and amplify it so you can just click and drag to select an area and then you've got a little amplifying area and you can just click and drag in this what we call hot text as soon as you have that finger with the arrow going backwards and forwards you can drag louder and smaller and if I drag it so it's a lot louder is basically going over the top and then I can just click away I can play that and listen and watch these these areas here look can you see that's called peaking and you want to avoid that basically you have gone over the top and you are distorting you don't want to get these red points here so if something is peaking it's going over you can see it says over then your audio is going to sound bad and will distort so I'm control or command Z to undo that and if they have come over and you want to check them again just click on them and they'll disappear so the only thing I might do is go in and listen to her a toy a toy I think that's too quiet so I can just click and drag to select the area and if I want I can just make it a bit louder again and do the same here click and drag and just drag up the DB level a bit to make it a bit louder and you can see you get you get you get feedback on the graph showing you how big it's going to be and as soon as you let go it's done you can click and listen a silly little toy. A toy. A toy. Yeah, might need a bit more work, but that's the basic idea. So now I have changed the volume of the clip. The whole thing looks a lot better, so that should be sorted out in Premiere Pro. Go back to Premiere Pro, nothing's changed. The only way to update this is to save it. So you go back to Sound Booth, you do File Save, and it will be done. I'm Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching. Thank you.